this is a heavy week, politically speaking. So much is happening in the country this week. Of course, today being the biggest, them of, the biggest of them all. And the Hurumuigai Kenyatta is at the center of the game. Today, I want us to look at why Uhuru Kenyatta defies what is generally accepted. That when a president is leaving office, he enters what we call the lame duck period. A lame duck president is a president who is about to leave. Generally speaking, people almost ignore him. They desert him. They look at the next big thing, which is the next president. In some countries, indeed, the moment a president is sworn in for his second term, people begin to look for the incoming president. Four years or so later, in the case of America. Perhaps explaining why Ronald Reagan in 1984 had to reassure Americans that he's not going to be a weak person. She was not going to be a weak person. Using that popular American saying, you ain't seen nothing yet, ushering in his second term. But generally speaking, Uhuru is a powerful president. With just 160 something days to go, Uhuru is becoming even more powerful than ever before. And the question you must ask yourself is why? I'll break it down and simplify for Kenyans. To begin with, Uhuru plays the long game. In the context of playing that long game, he can be very deceptive. He appears to be a person who is weak. That would explain why William Ruto, his deputy, thought he was running government. That is a bait thrown you away. When you think your opponent is weak, you make many mistakes. Go back to 1992. Moi appearing vanquished weak with nobody giving him a chance of even 500,000 votes. Every player, Kenneth Matiba, Mwai Kibaki, and everybody else, everybody thought the goal was empty. There was no goalkeeper. Moi was finished. So they couldn't give to each other. He beat them, hands down. When you play the long game like Uhuru Kenyatta, you use decoys, like I've said. When you play the long game like Uhuru Kenyatta, you allow your opponents to win small battles at the tactical level, and they think you are vanquished. They over-celebrate. They become overconfident. Your eyes are far. Their eyes are here. That's why you toss Kiamba their way. Let them win. You toss Juja their way. Toss Msambweni. And they celebrate those small battles. But the war is far away. Uhuru plays a long game. If you want to understand this, look at even his development. You look at his development projects. They are long term. In fact... Uhuru is playing almost like Agame, who has no term limit. Uhuru is playing like he's there for another 10, 20 years. Long term. Indeed, as early as 2013, immediately after being sworn in, I suspect Uhuru Kenyatta had dismissed William Ruto. He was not in his game plan. That is Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta for you. A long range. A person who plays at strategy level. Allowing their opponents to play at tactical level. Winning small battles. In football, for example, experienced teams play at the strategy level. Allowing newcomer teams to play at tactical level. Win small battles. Ball possession. Run all over the field. But the moment the experienced team, which is at strategy level, gets one chance they convert. Those of you of my age and perhaps older will remember the royal lamp, the, the jungle, the, 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 the rumble in the jungle. Muhammad Ali against George Foreman. George Foreman had a lot of victories, throwing punches at Muhammad Ali. But Muhammad Ali was looking at this giant and strategically timing him. One punch, George Foreman.
on, in the eighth round, I think, was on the canvas. That is the kind of game Uhuru Moiga is playing. Moiga Kenyatta. And that's why William Samoy Ruto should be a worried man. Worried because if you can see the way Uhuru is playing, the power he's wielding by the day, the strategist that he is, and while at it, if you are doubting me, ask yourself, why hasn't Uhuru played power politics like other people in power? Have you seen Uhuru Kenyatta getting excited about hiring and firing people? Most people in office exercise their power through hiring and firing. Look, four ministers have resigned. Tell me which president by now would not have used that chance to reward. Look at how some ministers were so miserably performing, so bad. We all expected Uhuru would fire them. We never. He doesn't exercise his power in the manner many of these people do. And therefore, if you want to understand that Uhuru is lethal, look at the patience. Looking long term, and I remind people, the most poisonous animals in the world are the most patient animals. If you look at categories of animals, the patient animal, even in terms of ability to get its prey, they are very patient. So a politician who is patient looks the long game, plays the long game. That's where William, William Samoy Ruto should be scared. That he was made to believe that Uhuru was nothing during his first term. That he was the one who was running government. And you can see what he says. And he was made to run to Mount Kenya and appear to convince Uhuru's backyard. Unknown to him was that Uhuru will come back strategically. And that's how you must read, read Sagana 3. That's why you must read Azimio, both in terms of formation, in terms of the position he's playing now in Azimio. And you can see this Azimio is going to be a monster that will devour. And you can't, you can't think, you shouldn't actually think, it will be actually foolish for anybody to think and imagine that Azimio was created a month or two or three months ago. This is part of the long-term strategy. And that is where Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta comes in. But finally, why do you think Uhuru Kenyatta is powerful? Why do you think he's becoming more powerful by the day? Having the controlling share in what is going on in politics today. The major shareholder. The man to watch. Why? There are a number of reasons. Because first, Uhuru the man is a politician. I've just said, he's a politician. Strategist. Playing, playing weak. And the opponents falling for it. First, therefore, Uhuru the politician. Tough politician. Strategy. Seeing very far. Number two. Uhuru Moegai Kenyatta is not just Uhuru Moegai Kenyatta. Uhuru Moegai Kenyatta is a Kenyatta. Please, write it down. Uhuru Moegai Kenyatta is not just Uhuru. He's the son of Jomo Kenyatta. When you look at your legal tender, you are not. There's a man there called Jomo Kenyatta. That's the kind of power I'm talking about. The Kenyattas are an institution. Make no mistake about it. They are an institution that has a network in the country and beyond. You can't underrate the, the network of the Kenyatta's. Never. It's a powerful institution. The Kenyatta's themselves are also powerful in many other ways, including business, economically, they are very powerful. That again you can't underrate. Who comes with that on the table? Kenyatta, as a name, evoke certain feelings among the Kikuyus. Don't be cheated. The moment you touch the Kenyatas, there's something you touch about the Kikuyus. Ignore the young men who are running on the road, shouting all manner of things. But at the heart of the Kikuyu, there is a Kenyatta feeling inside it. This you can ignore if you wish. And finally, 
Kenyatta is powerful. Uhuru Kenyatta is powerful because he is the President of the Republic of Kenya. As President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta is Head of State and Head of Government and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces or Defense Forces and the General or the Disciplined Forces. This is enormous power. If you bring this power to bear, I have said before, on an election, your opponent will be in problems. If you bring this power to bear, your opponent will be in problems. I know many people look at 2002 and I laugh at them. I ask them, if Moi got it wrong, who is the president of Kenya today? That was the long game I'm talking about. These guys play the long game. There's nothing like Moi losing 2002. There's nothing like Deep State losing. That was a game it, and it came to, to be fulfilled in 2013 when Uhuru Mugai became president. It's a long game. Right from Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta, Moi, and now Uhuru Kenyatta. So that office has a lot of powers. If the power of the president is used properly against you, my friend, if you are a wise man, you will almost give up. In fact, that's why many people have said William Samoy Ruto should have employed some strategy. The moment he saw Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta, exchanging that handshake, he should have played the game differently. Because to go against such, such a machine, such an infrastructure, waswahili wanasema, mpigangumi ukuta umiza mkono wake. Na hivo ndivo olivo kwa William Samoy Ruto. Trying to punch, trying to go against this force I'm talking about, when the Uhuru Kenyatta have described is combined with Raila, who is an election machine, a political genius, my friend, you are dead on arrival. And that is the way it is.